this uh, sort of new wave of um, uh, Scandinavian television series really started in, uh, in Denmark, obviously. Uh, I can say now. Um, around about the mid-90s, um, maybe difficult to pick a year, but, um, and one interesting aspect of the whole thing is that it actually came out of need. Um, earlier today, it was mentioned that uh, necessity is the mother of invention, and that's very true. Um, the thing was, among other issues, that the public broadcaster Danmarks Radio, the, the Danish publicaster, uh, was losing its audience. Commercial stations uh, were starting to rob a lot of its uh, audience. So they had a crisis on their hands. And they came up with the idea that, that local drama might be the way to, to keep them on watching the channel. Um, of course, this is a more complex story that, than and I'm going to tell right now. But <clears throat> it so happened that this change of commercial stations um, entering the scene was not the only thing happening. There was also some new things happening at the Danish film school um, at this time. A Danish radio, uh, television station, asked themselves, well, who, who are our audience and what do they want? And they came up with the answer, drama. Okay, what are they watching? They're watching American drama series. So let's figure out what the Americans are doing. And they actually sent people over there to look at how they did things and then adapted that process, that kind of, you know, the showrunner model, if we want to use that word. Um, so new people came in um, on the top level of uh, Denmark's uh, uh, radio and TV station um, and brought with them new ideas and new ways of uh, producing TV drama, not only from America, but also actually from Swedish state television that was actually doing quite well, uh, mostly in, in miniseries, I believe, at that, that time. If, if we go back to the mid-90s, uh, uh, it, it means that, uh, that when we started to, to work at the, 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 the big series at that time called Taxa, we, we knew immediately it was going to be produced. There was no question. There was set a pr production date for starting, so 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 the writing process was going to that. Uh, so there was some security about that we knew we wasn't in competition with anybody, uh, the, the the team who was working uh, with it, and uh, that kind of safetyness uh, it did work well. And of course, the other thing is that. When you work with uh, public television, they, and especially in, in, in Scandinavia, more, maybe a, a lot of other places also, there was also a, uh, there was a, 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 a they wanted, the, the, pub, the, the, the broadcaster wanted it should be some seriousness to it. It had to have some meaning about life and this, uh, life in Denmark and the situation and some can we say society. If, what is the society? So there was there was uh, this what we can call some uh, 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 seriousness to it that was really uh, so we did we we just didn't uh, we shouldn't just made entertainment we had to make something who was had some, some some seriousness to it. We have this tradition in 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 Scandinavia about making society critical crime stories, going back to the Swedish Shuvalvalu uh, tradition from, from the 70s. And uh, somehow this tradition is still living. And uh, when we was making the bridge, uh, we, we was really, we, we, we had this, we wanted, we could see we have this, what you can see from the outside of the world, this perfect society in Scandinavian countries with the welfare system and uh, uh, security nets over the pure, but we could also feel an anchor and uh, some kind of some suppressed anchor and uh, some uh, and 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 we thought that was interesting to to go into this anchor who's who's uh, and and try to to make a story about we have this perfect society, but underneath there's a lot of things going on and and and, and actually build up a story about feeling anger that the society is not perfect. Uh, and to me, I think that um, trust is uh, one of the key words in uh, making good drama. 
and uh, it, it, you can trust. If I have a very, very uh, good producer that I trust, and uh, in the, um, I think in the process of making it into a television show, uh, if you can cut out uh, all the executives and go straight to the broadcaster and, and not have meetings with 25 people, but just keep it close. I think that that's one of the keywords to uh, the good uh, series that have been made in Scandinavia. You are hired by the television station, so it's not a third part coming in having an opinion. It makes a whole world of differences. Um, it is it is the most important difference, I think, uh, especially for the writer as well, because you only have one you have to talk to. You don't have two parts or more investors coming in who have an opinion as well. It's it's one one thing. The other part is they, for DR, for example, it's very important for them that the critics like their show because they are politically, um, they got the budget out of uh, the politicians. So it's very important for them that the politicians think, okay, it's very important because all the critics like it more than only have large numbers of viewers. You have the freedom at DR to stop a show when, it's, when the writer don't have any stories anymore and think, okay, I'm finished with this story. They can actually stop it. <laughs> There's nobody who's coming and saying, oh no, it's really a good business. Can you please do one more season? Can we change the writer? Can we? They're not doing that. They're actually stopping the show when the writer don't want to write it anymore. <laughs> and that's the other part of this, say. We're trying to adopt that in, at TV2 at the moment. And there are some producers who really think we are crazy people when we're coming and saying, okay, if the writers, if they're leaving the show, then we won't do it anymore. And they, but they have this great numbers, they can do whatever. And it's, yeah, but, but who's, who's on the show now? So we're all from the same film tradition, and uh, a lot of it's a very small business in Denmark, and there are very few people making this and living of this. So uh, we have uh, that the best uh, film directors want to do television. So it's, it's uh, they're not, uh, they don't see it as less than making their movies. And all the big stars are even more interested in it because uh, they can get more screen time. And um, so, so, so we don't uh, make difference between uh, movies and television. And I think that actually adds up to uh, more quality and better educated uh, directors and writers and editors because they make feature films and then they make television and then they make feature films. We don't distinguish that way. Another story to the, to the Danish model for, for, for that is that the, the partnership, a producer and a writer, is so important and it takes time mm. to make that happen. And it's what they have uh, been doing at DR that actually there wasn't anyone else who wanted to do television in the beginning. So there were two producers and there were three or four writers, I think, and they did all the show for 10 years. Right now they want this. Um, uh, co-production between uh, Sweden and Denmark, two countries working together. It's very popular, for example. I'm working with an uh, idea with French-Swedish characters working in uh, uh, developing, for example. And I think this uh, two countries come together thing is uh, something new and interesting. When we started, I understood everything what Hans was saying. He, he didn't understand anything I was saying. <laughs> And, uh, and before that, there has been some, uh, some uh, Scandinavian co-productions uh, 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 series, but they have not succeeded very well because they didn't go into the cultural differences between Denmark and Sweden. They just put, it was like your pudding, you can say there was some, some tradition of Scandi pudding before, uh, but what been but when we were uh, uh, working with the Brits, we say we are going to use these differences. We are going to use that the Swedes don't understand the Danish, and uh, we are going to use the the, the cliches, so the, the the how Danes looks and Swedes, and how Swedes looks and Danes, and use it as a, a tool, uh, and also use the difference in, in the language that they don't understand each other, and there's words with double, double meaning. That means something in Swedish and, 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 and uh, another thing in, in Danish. We can't, the Swedes don't understand Danish people. They almost talk English to them. It's a shame, I think, because I live in the South, I can understand Danish. But in, in the bridge, in the beginning, we thought that's just very funny if we have uh, 
confusions about the language, but after one scene or two, we think, no, this is, this, we, this is going to be boring if we have to repeat this all the time. <coughs> so it's much easier if we, we, we decide right now that everyone understands each other, the Swedish and the Danish people, even if they talk different languages, uh, they, um, they understand each other. And it was also the director, he had great problems. He, ca he came from Stockholm <laughs> and he had a Danish course, <laughs> language, to learn some expressions because it's, it's, uh, it's the same language, it's also very different pronunciations, for example. But we, 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 and we also decided that it's not two countries, it's one area, it's one region, it's the Öresund's uh, region, instead of Denmark, Sweden. Uh, c coming to Final Cut, it's, uh, it's the, the head writer had the decision, uh, even if the producer says something else, <laughs> some, some of them, but he's involved in the whole process, uh, okay. looking at, oh yeah. Yeah, you could say we have, as what, what is also important in the Scandinavian model, is that we have a, a democratic culture, yeah. we can say. <laughs> so uh, we like consensus, we like, uh, we like to, to uh, uh, we feel we are equal somehow. So there's an equality, as an equal feeling that uh, everybody you put into a room, writers, uh, producers, directors, we are not, you know, we are, it's not a military hierarchy where there's a, we, we have this democratic feeling who's really goes deep into, the, into the, our culture. If, if you want to do a show together with, with a television station, a producer and a writer, if you can't agree about the final cut, then you, if somebody vetoing it, then you won't cooperate anymore, then the show is over. That's my opinion. So you really have not to get in there. You have to keep on trying to make everybody happy in the process. And for sure, if the writers really don't like the editing, from my point of view, I know the next script will be very bad because he'll be so unhappy and then he'll write <laughs> less enthusiastic and then the show gets worse and worse and worse. So it's not, you, you have to agree about it yeah. and you have to keep your writer happy. Yeah. And the producers in Denmark know that. They're, they are very aware of that. But if there is a, a disagreements about the editing, it's, or, uh, as I, I have experience, then it's the editor. Then we change the editor. Then we get because that's no maybe can be a problem that an editor is not good enough to to ma also make a, a maybe a problematic uh, episode good and then we, we we put another editor in with fresh eyes to to solve the problems. We're maybe a little too overwhelmed with the success, which uh, means that uh, no one is developing anything new because it's the same few writers just sitting. Uh, at the same spot that they've been sitting at for 10, 12 years, and uh, and it's the same people making everything. So I think that, uh, like you said, when you had uh, 22 writers, it's, it would be a good idea to start uh, uh, letting new creativity into the room, uh, because everyone gets old.